What up guys, this is New Icon. I hope you all had an amazing Thanksgiving for all of you guys in the United States. Uh, for everybody else, I hope you all have been having a wonderful holiday season thus far. Want to welcome you back. Uh, I have missed you guys! <laughs> but anyhow, okay, let's uh... Mind the mess here, man. Ugh. Had a paint session with my niece and my nephews and those are the uh, remains. But, to the thick of the video. I have been playing the fuck out of Resolution lately. I have gotten like a lot uh, more into the game and uh, it has kind of re... Ah, fuck, I don't even know the word I'm looking for. Uh, it's kind of gotten me back into the spirit of the hobby. I have been away for such a long time and I just recently started painting again. Uh, about a week ago, and that was like the first time in several months that I that I had done anything related to the hobby. I haven't even bought anything until Black Friday. <laughs> uh, I made one gigantic purchase on Miniature Market, and uh, that should be coming soon. Um, the entire order was for Confrontation Age of Ragnarok, a game that I really, really, really enjoyed. Um, I think a lot of people didn't give it enough um, of a chance. Uh, mind you, it was not as good as the previous editions. I, I did enjoy the previous editions of uh, Confrontation. However, Ragnarok for me was, was very enjoyable. I really liked it. Um, and it was one of the first games that kind of really pulled me away from, from 40k when I was deep into that. Um, and I was rocking the Wartube forums and all that shit. Uh, that was when I was that one dude in the bunch that was like, hey, what's this other stuff? Let's let's start playing all this other stuff. So it's a very, very, very fun game. Uh, one of uh, my favorites from way back in the day. However, no game will ever replace the Mutant Chronicles collectible miniatures game as my favorite miniatures game of all time. But anyhow, I also picked something up on Amazon. I wanted to pick it up uh, from Miniature Market because it was $18, but it sold out. And the next cheapest place I could have found it on was uh, Amazon, and it was like $21. And that is uh, Sedition Wars, which is right there, that bad boy. It is a massive box, man. It's, it's really awesome, too. Like, a, a lot of uh, the contents and shit. It's really good stuff. Um, I really liked the bases. However, I'm not a big fan of beveled bases. Uh, I've been separating everything as you can see. So a lot of this stuff is going to get used in several other games. I don't plan on playing Sedition Wars. I went through the rules. I really don't think I can get into it. A friend of mine, um, Sinister Cog, was was telling me I should give it a chance, but I don't know. We'll see. I'll, I might try it out sometime. But um, some of these minis would be actually really well for, um, really good to use for resolution. Uh, like some of these could easily be um, toxic zombies and shit like that. Uh, some of the uh, the troops can be perfect. Uh, for, uh, they're perfect for CSO. And uh, again, I, I still see myself using a lot of these for like my game, Gormageddon, which is coming out very soon. Um, that's in the proofreading stage. So yeah, but yeah, these bases are really nice. The only thing though is I'm I'm a dickhead when it comes to to bases on minis. If I have you know a game of something and one side. Uh, of the table has minis on lipped bases, then I would feel very uncomfortable using beveled minis against those. I know a lot of people don't have that problem. I've seen people who, who have like fucking hexagonal bases and, um, and uh, square bases and round bases all on the same table. And I'm like, no, I could not do that. I could not do that. So I don't know if I'm going to be using these. I really don't. Um, because all of my minis right now are already on lipped bases, so uh, yeah, what a what a bummer. Um, I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, but speaking of resolution, I made a sweet little purchase today uh, at Brooker's Hobbies. Uh, homie there who works there uh, gave me 25% off on. Uh, some of the stuff that I bought, which was just kind of like the last of their resolution stuff. Uh, before I do that, though, I want to show you quickly like some of the stuff that I've been painting. Um, this is the Bride of Lilith. This is from the Dravani faction. Let me see if I can get under the light better here. 
So she's finished. Really cool model. Um, a lot of these got stripped and repainted um, because, I, oh my God, they were horribly painted. I'm really, I, I was really bad. I, I still kind of think I'm not that great, but um, I feel like I've gotten better. So we are all our own worst critic. But uh, that is the Bride of Lilith. Let me show you the vassals. And speaking of this game, uh, we have been kind of prepping for a lot of bat reps and stuff. Um, we're going to be doing a paycheck campaign, which is part of the Outbreak expansion. So I really want to try and get some uh, bat reps back up on this channel. But uh, here you go. These are the vassals, which are kind of junk units in my opinion. They're not that amazing. Uh, if you can get them in a close combat, which can be a bitch, especially against a ranged faction like the APAC or the um, uh, CSO, I mean, you're going to have to grind it out. And they die a lot. So, yeah. And here is the... Voldoka, Volkoda, Volkoda, I think it is, or Voldoka, something like that. Um, I was really bummed out when I when I read because I wanted to play this guy, but they come in packs of two. Um, however, you buy the blisters in groups of one, and I can't get my hands on any of them anymore. So um, I know I think I can go on the aberrant site, but I just I don't know, man. I, I can't muster up paying full price for a lot of this stuff. Uh, I might at some point because I really like the game and I want to show my support, but it's just being used to paying it's uh, paying such a discount and then having to like you know shell out more on something that you know you've paid less on. Uh, it's kind of a bummer. Um, so these are some of the other guys. They're going to get rebased. This is the Ronin Brick, um, and then I stripped all of these guys. Um, these are the Enforcers. That's the Enforcer Heavy. And uh, this is the Arashi, which is like a spellcaster. I prefer the male version because it looks like Raiden. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I plan on getting all these back on some bases. I took them off of the, the lipped bases. They were on lipped bases because I, I was planning on using these, but then I thought, well, shit, I use these minis for Gormageddon as well. So that would just kind of be a bummer and I, I wouldn't want to fucking OCD man I swear I'm gonna really think about that I don't know yet I really don't know yet um, I did buy some plastic card uh, some of some of this stuff so I could possibly uh, you know use these on some lift bases um, but I don't I'm not completely sure yet I don't know what I want to do ah, because also if you look at these guys they're all the bases are all done so it would suck it would break my heart to rip them off of those bases um, here are some more Giovanni models. I, I don't remember the name of this guy. I think he's the Executor. Or Executor. Um, yeah. Okay, so I picked up three Ronin models and a CSO model. So the first one I want to open up is this bad boy here, which is in a beautiful little box. This is the CSO Warbot. Crazy enough, he was $15. However, uh, because of uh, the discount, it was a 25% discount, he came out to like $11, which whew, blew me away. Amazing. Especially considering I love the game so much. But, okay, let's open it up. Oh, man, that's a lot of noise. This is what he looks like. He's kind of, I don't know, it looks kind of <laughs> kind of goofy to me. Especially with that uh, little symbol there. Very, you know, Civil War-ish, cavalry looking. So it's just a lot of foam. Here's his card. Uh, let's see how good he is. Movement of six, three armor. That's, I mean... I don't know, I would have assumed he'd have more than that, considering there are some regular units that have, you know, two, three armor. Um, hmm. For a stomper, he's got a low close combat score 
Uh, that makes sense. That SAG is skill, uh, speed and agility. Your ability to dodge uh, incoming fire. Um, range skill attack is a three. Um, body is a five. That's really, I mean, that's really good. Uh, he's 117 points. His nerve is five. Uh, so I doubt he's going to be running away. Uh, so basically the way this works is these skills here um, are required uh, in opposed roles. This is how the game works. It's all opposed roles. So if I'm shooting you, I would roll my uh, I would roll 2d6 and add my RCA score. And then you would roll 2d6 and add your SAG. Uh, if I win, I, I hit. If you win, you dodge. Close combat is... 2d6 plus CCA versus 2d6 plus CCA, and um, the winner inflicts damage. Once you deal damage, you roll the number of damage dice uh, based on the weapon. Um, but the way that works is, for example, if we had a stomper shooting another stomper, you see here that he's got a mini gun. The range is 10 for short, 20 for the long range. Minus two long range, that minus two is applied to your RCA if you're ever shooting past the short distance. So if you're shooting uh, between 11 and 20, you're going to be applying a minus two to your uh, weapon range, uh, or the not the weapon range, uh, to your RCA skill. So let's say that we were within 10 and he hits. Um, so he rolls, you know, 2d6 plus three. The other guy rolls 2d6 plus one. I hit, and you roll damage. Now the damage dice here is this is for the short range. This is for the long range. So if we were if we were within 10, we would roll 8d6, but Notice he has an armor of three. Now, sometimes some weapons have P, which means uh, penetration. So a P1 means that it would subtract one from the other person's armor. So that would bring it down to two. But since the weapon we're using does not, it doesn't. So what happens next is his armor gets reduced from the total number of damage dice to be rolled. So instead of eight, I'm rolling five. Now, when I roll those five dice, anything over a five is going to hit. Um, that's how damage is dealt. Anything over the body of the uh, opponent. Here's the damage gauge, which tells you how much damage they have. And, uh, yeah. I don't see anything really amazing about this guy. But he can... Oh, wow. He can shoot... Uh, he can fire all his weapons without penalty. Which is really good. And move. Very interesting. Okay, so here, whoa, what is, this is the, the base. It's a big ass piece of metal. Um, all right, so this thing comes with a lot of pieces. Let's flip these off, side. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but ice cream. <laughs> All right. That's a big ass model, man. Uh, let's see. So I am assuming I'm not assuming anything because I don't fucking know how this thing works. Okay, so these are probably for the legs. These fucking crazy chicken legs. So like that. And don't know about this. Oh, there it is. That or it goes the other way. But there's that. And this goes there. Oh, perfect fit. That right there looks like a head, man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's going to go there. This will go there. And the legs obviously go where they're supposed to go. And uh, these, I don't know how these work, but here are the weapons. So it's got a pulse gun and a mini gun. Cool. Oh, okay, so the little divots there. So it's gonna go like. Or not. 
I'm gonna have to check it out. But um, there you go. And it's got these little side guns too, so. Very interesting. Fucking big ass base. All right, now let's take a look. Let's take a look at some uh, Ronin stuff. Right, as of right now, I only have one Ronin model, and that is the Brick. This guy is fucking brutal, brutal. Um, but okay, so this one here is the Ronin Maven or the Shootist, and he comes with his card. Oh wow, comes with two versions of the card. All right, so. This way. That is a really cool pose. Damn, they had two of these two. I probably should have gotten the other one. All right, let's see what makes him so special. Wow, very different stats. The Maven looks a lot more badass. A movement of five. RCA of holy crap. Oh, well, they both have an RCA of four. Uh, they're pretty good in close combat. Their skill and agility is really good. Their body's not that amazing. Um, and this guy's nerve is a lot better, so he's not really going to panic or flee. Um, basically, in order to, to keep yourself from running away, you roll 2d6 and add uh, the nerve, and the target number is a 10. So as long as you get a 10 or better, you're fine. So he gets to choose one, an assault rifle or a combat shotgun. And this guy gets to choose either a assault rifle or a uh, dual smart pistols. Very different uh, scores too. So this guy costs 58, this guy costs 49. And they are, the Maven is really fucking boss, man. He's got a rep of three. Beginning of each turn, you guys have a uh, control a control phase and a control roll to determine who goes first. You, got, you roll two d six and add the highest rep of any anybody on your uh, on your side of the battlefield. So next here is the Ronin Fiddler and Bomb Bot. This one always looked really interesting. And the bot looks really cool too. Holy shit. Is that a flamethrower? That looks like a flamethrower. Huh, interesting. So here's the bot. Here is the fiddler. It fucking looks cool. Okay, one card. Let's see what makes him so special. Uh, he is pretty fucking weak. Uh, 31 points, that makes sense. Uh, handy and controller, you get to pick one. So a pulse gun or a flamethrower. Well, I don't see a pulse gun anywhere on him. But... Cool. Okay, okay. So I'm assuming that this is going to go over, over his shoulder. All right, uh, let's see. He's got a recon drone, sentinel turrets. Let's flip it over. Uh, EMP grenade, whoa, that's pretty good. No, that's not pretty good. <laughs> Flamethrower. Nice. Okay, so for five extra points, he can have a recon drone. Okay. Damn. This fucking guy can have up to three of them. All right. All right, last model, because this video is almost 20 minutes already. Here is a Ronin Fist, which is supposed to be, I think, an extremely awesome close combat model. And yeah, close combat of four. All right, let's take him out. Here he is. 
So those two little pieces there are gonna get cut off. Pretty nice sculpt. All right, all right, let's see why he's so awesome. Flurry, killing blow. Oh, damn. Okay. So he's got shuriken. And he's going to just be attacking with his fists, so. Okay, Flurry's really good. Ah, uh, let's see. Mine is... A... Okay. Jesus. That's really good. That's really good. Okay. Uh, on a successful close combat attack, model does 5d6 damage to opponent. So that's that's his um, melee damage. He also has parry. Shrug it off, which is also really good. If a model has this, it, it basically means if they take just one point of damage, it immediately gets uh, discarded. So they're not taking any. Uh, roll one. Roll a d3 to discover this model's armor value each time it is hit. Holy crap! That. That's fucking insane. So every time, every time the fist gets hit, you roll a D3 and that will tell you his armor for that, for that hit. And your crew can have up to six of them. That's the fist. This guy sounds really fucking awesome. All right. So there you go, guys. That is uh, my video for today. <laughs> I uh, hope to catch you guys next time. Um, I have been repainting quite a bit of stuff. Um, this is the whole gang for, a whole gang I'm working on for Toxic Holocaust. Not too long ago I had that accident where everything fell down so a lot of the shit got chipped and beat up. So I've been in the process of repainting some of these. This is a uh, Judge Dredd figure. And this here is a Mage Knight figure. And what I really like about this is you can actually tell the difference between the pre-paint and my painting job. That up there is, uh, wait, that up there, all this is the pre-paint. And everything below, like his torso as of right now, is my paint. Oh man, come on. I hate when it doesn't focus. <laughs> All right, so Nolan Oil, man, that shit is a fucking lifesaver. But okay, guys, thank you guys so much for watching, and I do hope you guys have a very wonderful rest of the holiday season. Um, again, hope you all had a great Thanksgiving for those of you in the U.S., and I hope you all have an outstanding Christmas, which is coming very, very soon. Before you guys know it, it'll be Christmas, trust me. <laughs> so uh, if I don't post again, um, Merry Christmas, and I hope you guys have a wonderful new year. Thanks again for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Be safe, guys. Bye.